வணக்கம் கோஸ் கான்செப்ட்ஸ் ஆர்கனைசேஷனல் கிளைமேட் த கான்செப்ட் ஆஃப் ஆர்கனைசேஷனல் கிளைமேட் வாஸ் ஃபார்மலி இன்ட்ரடியூஸ்ட் பை த ஹியூமன் ரிலேஷனிஸ்ட் இன் த லேட் நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டிஸ் நவ் இட் ஹஸ் பிகம் எ வெரி யூஸ்ஃபுல் ஃபார் thinking about and describing the social system organizational climate can also be referred to as the situational determinants or environmental determinants which affect the human behavior according to campbell organizational climate can be defined as a set of attributes specific to a particular organization that may be induced from the way that organization deals with its members and its environment it is a reflection of the perceptions that an employee has about his work environment organizational climate is also known as corporate climate as it quantifies the culture of a corporation it has a significant impact on job satisfaction productivity and motivational levels of the employees in the organization in brief organizational climate is a specific set of attributes to a particular organization for its members to achieve the effectiveness the characteristics of organizational climate one general expression organizational climate is the general expression or the perception of the individuals about its organization unique identity it is the organizational climate that gives the organization a unique or distinct identity third one multi dimensional concept its numerous dimensions include the degree of conflict leadership style authority structure and autonomous nature fourth one intangible concept a qualitative or intangible concept as it is quite challenging to explain its components in measurable units five enduring quality organizational climate is built over enduring quality of the internal environment of the company that is experienced by its employees overt factors of organizational climate overt factors are tangible straight and observable now we will see seven different overt factors of organizational climate one hierarchy two goals of organization three technological state of organization four financial resources five skills and abilities of employees six efficiency measurement seven performance standards adopted what are all covert factors of organizational climate covert factors are intangible and depend on culture or special knowledge these covert factors of organization climates may be one value two attitude three satisfaction four feelings five interaction and six supportiveness now what are all the types of organizational climate one people oriented climate it is concerned for the employees rule oriented climate it is for future benefits innovation oriented climate it is to develop new and innovative things result oriented climate it processes to refine and achieve results so these are all the four different types of organizational climate what is managerial managerial styles 
every manager has a unique style of handling the employees and teams the managerial styles refer the various ways of dealing with the subordinates at the workplace it is also called as management styles the superiors must decide on the future course of action as per the existing culture and conditions at the workplace the nature of employees and their mindsets also affect the management style of working management and leadership what are all the differences in managerial effectiveness angle management and leadership are two different things but they should always go together in leadership one tries to get the people in a group or an organization to understand an overall vision baron benis listed differences between a manager and a leader in his book on becoming a leader it can be seen in managerial effectiveness angle manager focuses on systems and structures while a leader focuses on people a manager administers while a leader innovates a manager relies on control while a leader inspires trust a manager generally looks at things in the short term while a leader thinks long term these are all the differences between manager management and leadership in managerial effectiveness angle transnational corporation it is an enterprises that is involved with the international production of goods and services for investments or income and asset management in more than one country it sets up factories in developing countries as land and labor are cheaper there a transnational corporation operates substantial facilities does business in more than one country and does not consider any particular country its corporate home one of the significant advantage of transnational company is that they are able to maintain a greater degree of responsiveness to the local markets where they maintain facilities transnationality also refers to the extent to which a firm engage in value creating activities across national borders in brief transnational corporation is an enterprise involved in production of goods or services and operating globally country managers country managers represent their company in a foreign country country managers work within growing industries experiencing global expansion they manage all operations in a particular region including recruitment budgets planning and submitting reports country managers might also require specialized skill sets and industry related knowledge country managers responsibilities are one liaising with head office and writing up quarterly or annual reports two recruiting vetting and training all new staff three reaching the country or region thoroughly and adapting strategies accordingly four monitoring performance at all levels and scheduling training as required five implementing an effective brand strategy and ensuring consistency six building professional relationship with staff and clients seven maintaining a good image of the organization at all times in brief they are all 
managers representing operations of their company in foreign countries leadership effectiveness leadership effectiveness is a multifaceted term with a variety of possible components that can be difficult to distill in one specific definition the leadership effectiveness is a successful exercise of personal influence by an individual which results in accomplishing one or several goals as a result of the coordinated efforts of those who are led normally leadership effectiveness is measured in terms of a leader's ability to influence coordinate and control some of these factors surely still play a part in leadership effectiveness in the context of global leadership leaders can no longer rely strictly on the authority of their positions team members expect leaders who are accountable able to inspire stay and hold to values that or worthy of respect in brief it is an effective exercising of personal influence in successful fulfillment of organizational goals the global business manager the global business manager is a manager who has to achieve an efficient distribution of assets and resources while protecting the competence at hand the global business manager's overall goal is to capture the full benefit of integrated worldwide operations they take risks across national and functional boundaries they are responsible for all of a company's foreign business international sales cultural marketing or overseas manufacturing the global business manager's responsibility for the distribution of crucial assets and resources is closely tied to shaping an integrated strategy what are the factors affecting managerial effectiveness to equip their capabilities there are five one role performance the roles are interpersonal informational and decisional roles second one skills the skills are technical skills human skills and conceptual skills third one education and training fourth one managers experience fifth one managers personality they must have effective personality types of management skills according to american social and organizational psychologist robert cards there are three types of management skills one technical skills technical skills involve skills that give the managers the ability and knowledge to use a variety of techniques to achieve their objectives two conceptual skills these involve the skills of managers in terms of the knowledge and ability for abstract thinking and formulating ideas third one human or interpersonal skills the human or interpersonal skills are the skills that present the managers ability to interact at work or relate effectively with people we will see different management styles first directive or coercive management style the prime objective of this style is immediate compliance from the employees this is effective when there is a crisis and hence deviations are risky this management style is coercive and autocratic this is characterized by a top to down decision making process where the decision is made from the top and all the others below are expected to fall in line and follow this style closely controls employees 
and motivates by threats and discipline. The focus is on orders, set standards and makes them to meet the set standards. It is better use the coercive style in case of emergencies. This is ineffective when employees are underdeveloped. A little learning happens with this style. The highly skilled employees become frustrated in this style of management. It results in micromanaging. Often, this management style is not recommended. This style should be used with extreme caution and only when absolutely necessary or as a last resort. Authoritative or visionary management style. In this style, the prime objective is long-term direction and vision for the employees. The manager sets the vision of the company, makes it clear to the employees and provides clear direction towards achieving the vision. The manager share some input and reiterate the vision if and when necessary. He does not tell them how to do things. The focus is on set vision for the team and allows them to achieve it. The firm but fair manager gives employees clear direction, motivates by persuasion and feedback on task performance. It is effective when clear directions and standards needed and when the leader is credible. It is ineffective when employees are underdeveloped and they need guidance on what to do. If the leader is not credible, people won't follow the vision as they don't believe in it. This style of management is often touted as the most effective out of all the six management styles mentioned here, although it has some disadvantages. Affiliative management style. The prime objective of this style is harmony among the employees and between manager and employees in the workplace. This type of manager puts the people first and the task that needs to be accomplished second. The manager focuses on avoiding conflicts and works at encouraging a good personal and professional relationship among employees. The manager motivates by seeing to it that everyone is happy and satisfied. It has good team bonding. Here the employees self-worth and self-esteem will be high with the knowledge that their manager values them personally and professionally. It is effective when routine tasks, adequate performance, good counseling and helping. It is least effective when performance is inadequate. It does not emphasize performance when a company does not have the spirit of teamwork, an affiliative management style is definitely useful. This affiliative approach is preferable when the tasks performed by employees are routine and do not require top-notch performance. The participative or democratic management style. The prime objective of this style is commitment and consensus among people. The participatory manager is inclined to have a willingness to listen to everyone, recognizing that everyone has ideas that should be considered in the company's decisions. They ask the employees what they would like to do and opens the floor for voting. The manager encourages employee participation in decision making and other important aspects of management. 
this manager motivates by recognizing team effort and rewarding the employees and the team for it it is effective when employees working together staff have experience and credibility steady working one one month etc this is least effective when employees must be coordinated and there is crisis no time for meeting there is lack of competency and close supervision is required this management style applies best if the employees or subordinates are experienced qualified and have credibility to carry out their task the pace setting management style here prime objective is accomplishing task at a high standard of excellence the pace setting manager sets a cracking pace from the beginning the team operates with high energy engagement and motivation as the term implies the manager sets the pace in this management style often it is at a fast and cracking pace the manager often prefers to personally do many things by himself as a way to set example for subordinates and employees to follow the manager expects the employees to be able to pick up where they left off he believes that by doing how it is done self direction will be possible it is effective when people are highly motivated competent little direction or coordination is required and when managing is by experts it is least effective when workload requires assistance from others and when development coaching and coordination required this is suitable in organizations where the workforce needs very little direction and coordination the coaching management style the prime objective of this style is long term professional development of employees it focuses on the learning experience this type of manager is often known as the developmental manager since the focus is on the professional development of the subordinates the manager has great willingness to help employees and encourage them to further develop their strengths and improve on their weaknesses and increase their performance levels the manager is expected to be an expert and highly experienced in order to be credible in performing the manager motivates by providing employees and subordinates with opportunities for professional growth and development it is effective when skill needs to be developed employees are motivated and wanting development it is ineffective when the leader lacks expertise when performance discrepancies is too great coaching managers may persist rather than exit a poor performer the manager this management style is ideal where the employees are in need of instruction and training the specific meaning of group it is a collection of individuals who have regular contact and frequent interaction mutual influence common feeling of camaraderie that means mutual trust and friendship and who work together to achieve a common set of goals group influence is a phenomenon that occurs when the majority of people in a group influence the thoughts and behaviors of other people within that group groups use their shared beliefs and experiences to strengthen the group which can be positive or negative what are the five stages of group development first forming it refers initial meeting together storming it refers resolving differences norming it refers agreeing 
purpose and context performing it refers achieving the purpose adjourning or mourning it refers completion ending or evolution team what is the specific meaning of team a team is defined as a group of people who perform interdependent task to work toward accomplishing a common mission or specific objective a team is a group of individuals that is human or non human working together to achieve their goal the individuals forming a team should ideally think more or less on the same lines and should have similar interests and objectives team management refers to the various activities which bind a team together by bringing the team members closer to achieve their set targets teams are formed deliberately and carefully in meet work needs that an individual or a group of individuals cannot meet as effectively although many groups are called teams not every work group is a team what are the differences between groups and teams i have mentioned 10 differences between the group and a team see that in this diagram i have given that you can easily differentiate that meaning the meaning of group is in brief a collection of individuals who work together in accomplishing a task but team a group of persons having collective identity to accomplish a goal number of leaders in a group is only one in a team more than one the status of group is independent team is interdependent the process of group is discuss decide and delegate but for team discuss decide and do the nature of work in group is individual but in team it is collective the focus of group is attaining individual goals but for team attaining team goals the accountability of group is individual and in team either individually or mutually the level of trust in group is low but in team it is very high and commitment in group it is low but in team it is high managing conflict in group is weak but in team it is strong golden rules of effective management according to london school of business and finance there are nine one be consistent to communicate clearly three recognize and reward hard work four be transparent five encourage team members to come up with ideas six set a good example for your team seven create a positive environment eight help your employees enjoy work nine be organized in your work managerial competition from a managerial perspective competition generally falls into the external environment through it can also take shape in the internal environment through rivalry between strategic business units for managers understanding the external competitive landscape is a critical factor in assessing company strategies and benchmarking appropriately to ensure the competitiveness of the firm business that fails to keep pace with their rivals will eventually be overpowered and often forced to, to develop a exit strategy avoiding the risk of competitive factors demands a strong understanding of operational efficiency that is low cost quality production differentiation and competitive advantage or who you target and whether or not you have a cost or quality advantage